today I take great delight in introducing uh, Mrs. Deepa. She's the owner and the head of the Little Millennium uh, Preschool at RMV Second Stage New Bell Road. Madam has been an entrepreneur from 2017, but she has been dedicatedly working in the field of education for the past 24 years. Mama hearty welcome to the school's platform. This is our Leader Speak series where we are connecting parents to the schools and school leadership. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Swapna. Thank you. Ma'am, we would like to know, uh, you know, how would, how is a kid welcomed into the uh, class and, you know, how does a typical day for a child goes in Little Millennium? Uh, the typical day in the school goes with a very warm, uh, you know, welcome in the morning. The teachers and the caretakers are uh, there near the entrance to welcome them. And we have, uh, you know, an assembly in the morning to, you know, get them, uh, you know, going into the, you know, classrooms before, uh, you know, getting into the classrooms. And the very, you know, the very first sight in the morning of their class teachers is all what they look for. Because even though they see the other teachers inside the you know, premises, they would keep looking out for their own class teachers. So the class teachers are there to welcome them in the morning and uh, they are uh, there in the uh, assembly area waiting for the assembly to start. This is how the school starts. And it is all positivity and it is all uh, you know, a sense of creating happiness in the whole center. We just would want them to come you know, out of choice and not out of force. Out of choice and not out of force. Excellent yes. uh, way for a child. You know, a whole uh, the thought process behind that, where the child yes. is made welcome and feels comfortable. Yes. So, ma'am, uh, this comfort and this the comfort I'm sure is also translated into learning. So, what uh, kind of innovative approach and techniques uh, can a parent find in uh, Little Millie? Uh, we at Little Millennium actually, you know, cater with this. Uh, uh, curriculum which is called as seven petal curriculum okay wherein we are uh, catering to all the seven skills which is going to help the child uh, you know to learn many things playfully for example i would want to put in across we have a lot of activities which has uh, fine motor activities gross motor activities language development activities on language development cognitive development and we have a lot of activities wherein we get to know about you know we nurture every individual uh, child's potential there and uh, you know we have uh, personal awareness also and we have socio-emotional uh, development activities also which is going to help the child uh, you know learn the concept much better so whenever we we have uh, 10 straight themes starting from June to March in an academic year the child is going to learn everything thematically, but at the same time, a lot of academics also, like when the child comes to a pre-nursery grade, the child will be learning everything orally, nothing in writing. That is between the age group of two to three. And next going, the next milestone would be three to four years where the child would be coming to grade the, the nursery grade, where the child would be prepared to write physically and you know, mentally. So what we say is, you know, when we say about fine motor skills, it is something to do with the fingers. We actually try to strengthen the finger muscles of the children. That is very important because they will have to, children when they come to nursery before that, they should know how to hold a pencil. So they will be using the four fingers where they know that, yes, they are supposed to use these three fingers to hold a pencil. And we will be teaching them how to hold the pencil and write it. Going forward, they will not be scared of writing and the you know, handwriting would be much more neater and clear. So that is which is very important. And now going towards LKG nursery, what happens is they are going to learn uh, the alphabets in uppercase. That's going to be from A to Z and one to 10 in numbers. So then going uh, forward to LKG, LKG what happens, they learn cursive writing. We don't teach them small uh, print letters. It's going to be cur cursive letters, small letters, gradually learning family words. And when they go to upper KG, they will be using these three letter family words in a sentence. This is how it goes. So the approach is in such a way that all the themes uh, you know, the concepts are learned along with, you know, the, that particular theme for the month starting from June to March in an academic year. Yeah. Wonderful. And the gross motor skills also are, uh, you know, enhanced so that they have that proper, you know, balance and they are able to have their body movement 
you know perfectly fine cognitive development there are a lot of thinking uh, you know activities which they have and every day towards the end of the day we have this uh, nurturing individual uh, potential which there is a period given to them just to leave them and make them understand what they are good at so sometimes they come and say that they are not good at singing they are not good at dance they don't want to dance they are shy they don't want to color they don't want to draw but at the end of the academic year we would have seen the most hated activity being done perfectly well by the end of the year that is nurturing their potential which they will not even know some of the parents would not even know that their child would be good in this particular thing but yes we bring that you know thing out from the child and try to bring it uh, in front of the parents for them to understand that yes this is how your child is and please see they will not be you know they will actually be shocked parents will be shocked to know that yes they come and say that ma'am my child was never good at this and now you see that my child has mastered this art on to it so that's a very big uh, you know uh, that's that's the reward what we get more than anything very anyway. very interesting right the child even the child doesn't know uh, the child is good at it likes it or not yes. the parents are not yes. aware of it but you so very gently nurse the child guide the child to bring that aspect out just uh, very reassuring to a lot of people ma'am the learning also happens out of outside of the classroom too so the play area uh, the way uh, the children interact with the staff and you know, how is this also taken into consideration yes this is also called as you know we have a corner for that where it is called as socio emotional uh, you know a corner on to it what happens is whenever we have some internal events happening we have a role play we have a storytelling corner for them so these are the places which is outdoor which is done inside the lawn the school lawn so here what happens they take turns in uh you know sharing their uh, ideas and sharing their views on to it so that way they understand that yes there is a, a time when they have to talk and they have to wait for the others uh, you know to uh, stop with their uh, views whatever it is and then continue with their uh, you know talking which happens when they come to play there is lot of things which they learn while playing waiting for their turns waiting for their time to come sharing you know they are taught that yes sharing is very important initially when they come you know if there are 8 to 10 balls you will see 8 or 10 of them just holding it to their uh, you know uh, just very uh, close to them and not sharing it with anybody but once they all you know get into this kind of an outdoor uh, play which they start learning that yes we have to share in case you know we have to make friends and they are our friends and we are a part of a team so that you know uh, getting that feeling that they are a team is very important that comes to them automatically when they when they start you know playing outside so and uh, not only a team spirit but uh, social skills are also encouraged and also enhanced yes yes but the another thing that some parents would always worry about is that a uh, each child uh, has their own pace of learning some develop their motor skills very fast some are slightly slower the learning speed is also uh, you know individual child has its own pace so how do you uh, bring a uniformity or how do you uh, address this challenge in the classroom yeah the one thing whenever i have an inquiry as a parent coming in i tell them the same thing especially with the parent who are a bit concerned about their child that the child is uh, you know achieving this particular milestone a bit late so what i tell parents is that's fine that's absolutely fine it's just like a garden with flowers i just ask them is uh, would you like that garden which has only rose flowers and not any other flowers so they say no we want you know we want a mix of all the flowers into it so the children are just like that so we have all uh, you know kind of children into our school who are a bit uh, some of them are very fast some of them are uh, you know a uh are at par with the other some of them are a bit late but with the parents where they are a bit concerned we say that they need to have the patience to wait for them that will definitely happen and that support from the school and from the teacher is definitely given on a saturday so that you know those children who are a bit slow in picking up will definitely uh, you know pick up so they those children are called on a saturday and the teachers sit with them separately with one on one attention given to them that's very important this is probably we start the session in the month of june 
I think by August, mid August, we identify we, who are those you know kids who need that extra support from the school and from the teachers to you know bring them at par with the other children, and that beautifully happens before we, uh, you know, before we break for the uh, Dasara vacation. So that's very important. So what we tell parents is, please don't compare your child with anybody else. In case you know you start comparing, it's not going to be easy. You just have to have the patience and those places where we really feel that, yes, there is a medical help which is needed in case if there is a disorder or something, then we tell the parents to uh, just take the child for a, you know, a test and just get the, um, you know, what do you say, get the suggestion from the Evaluation pediatrician and try to her. take it forward. Yes, that's very important. And in case we feel that there is you know, there is a child who is absolutely, uh, there is there is a lot of, uh, um, you know, a uh, lot of delay in the learning part or probably the, with the kids, especially with the Down syndrome cases and all, you know, we tell them that, you know, they need to go for an external uh, therapy from outside, but then we have this extended support from there. We don't say that we don't take children with the special needs at all into the school we definitely take and we have handled many children like that but yes we don't have uh, teachers who are uh, you know trained to handle special needs children but yes we do handle with the uh, you know external uh, support from the uh, parent side where they have already gone to a place where they have they have been helping them and we extend the support for them we continue from there and we keep in touch with those uh, doctors who are uh, you know training them and we uh, try to continue with the same thing in the school also very encouraging mom because it's very inclusive uh, you're uh, yes. taking uh, children not uh, you know biased about anything very inclusive yes. Uh, yes. very heartening to know that mom on that's very academic... important yeah that's very important for now why because these children with special needs they go to a particular place where they will not be more than four or five in a batch so they would also be looking forward to socially mingle with others to bring them to a normal school is very important 70 percent of their fear they overcome only when they come to a school where they are at least 15 or 20 of them along with them that's very important and they learn many things from them Nurturing, you use the word nurturing, and I would uh, like to take it here also. The environment is nurturing for one and all. There is uh, no exception, no bias. Uh, seriously, happening to know about that. Mom, academic is covered, emotionally also things uh, looks like uh, kids are uh, much nurtured and taken care of. The physical safety aspect, uh, how was little millennium taking care of it? The physical safety, yes, we do have the... Uh, you know, fire safety things, everything in place, all the equipments. We have CCTV cameras, plus we have the escort cards given to the parents when the dispersal happens. Without the escort cards, we don't allow the child to go with anybody else. Uh, the name and the photo of the particular person who is going to pick up the child back from the school is very, very important and it's mandatory. They need to carry the escort cards to school. Many times it has happened that, you know, even though we know the mother or the father who is there near the gate, but that particular uh, day, there might be a different caretaker who is not on duty near the gate or a teacher who was not on duty every day who doesn't recognize the mother or the father from the other class so we have sent back the parents saying that no you will have to get the escort card back and worst scenario what happens is in case if they have left the escort card somewhere and if there's if there is somebody else who's come to pick up, we tell them that they need to send us the picture on WhatsApp, the photo of the person who's going to come and pick up the child. And we take the name of that person, everything, we match it with the picture, send a confirmation with the child inside the gate with the person, whoever has come, we click the photo and send it on WhatsApp, take the confirmation from the parent side saying that, yes, can we send? And then only we send them. So this is, and every area, external area, as I was telling you, they play a lot outside. So every corner, wherever we have felt that, yes, it has to be carpeted, we have carpeted it with it. And the entire stairs where they go up and down has been carpeted. Plus there is a safety net also, which is being uh, put so that even though if they peep down and see what's happening, there, is, there cannot be any accidents which can happen. Absolutely taken care. Mm -hmm. 
going an extra mile taking the pictures getting confirmations to make sure yes. that the child reaches home safely yes. very hard thing as this a lot of things are happening kids are learning so how many events or what's the what's the biggest event where these kids can showcase their talents uh we have the first thing when they come into the uh school the first thing for the academic year is going to be the grandparents day somewhere in the month of july which we have and you should see them the way they showcase their talent in front of their grandparents because we feel that grandparents are the ones who give them lot of encouragement more than parents i would want to say so now parents have been very very uh, busy in their uh, you know work life so most of them are under the grandparents care so you know the grandparents are the you know primary uh, caretakers now actually you know so they uh, take care of the children so well and they have to be um, you know their uh, help and their support which uh, has to be acknowledged so we have uh, the grandparents day where they will be uh, showcasing a lot of talents in front of them and we have sports day in the month of december and we have annual day in the month of february where it's a huge it's a huge event so these three are the major events wherein we have very small internal events also every festival we have a celebration in the school where they are they come dressed up in that particular attire for the day and they come and uh, speak in the assembly as to what exactly uh, what is the significance of that particular uh, festival and uh, uh for example it's going to be shankranti now and we have this kite festival coming up where we bring in the you know fathers along with the uh, kids coming in and uh, you know trying to with the mothers trying to fly the kites in the premises and they understand uh, which are the states in the you know country where they have this kite festival uh, being celebrated so we we are having it next week in the school Uh, if it is going to be you know continuing with offline in case if uh, you know the government doesn't restrict us going online now so otherwise these are all the things which we celebrate many more many more like this we have national uh, read, you know readers day and we have uh, uh, you know we just celebrated that a few uh, months back and uh, we have uh, uh, we have this every state we have a celebration where we they get to know about every state once in 3 months so we had this uh, you know rajput festival uh, last month where they understood what was about rajasthan all about rajasthan like that we had gujarat we had kerala we had you know goa also what are all the things which they celebrate so we give them you know very good uh, knowledge about all these events lot of activities going on and in lot of uh, the the way in which you are doing states culture showcasing parents grandparents uh, excellent to know ma so what kind of an uh, parental participation of course all these events they are invited and they would be participate other than this uh, how much or to what extent would you expect a parent to participate in a academic year academically it's very important i keep telling parents that you know it is not enough if they just take an admission and think that yes the children are going to school their job ends no it is actually the school gets over by around 1 o'clock max and after that what i would you know request every parent who come to me i say that they need to take at least an hour uh, you know an hour's time out for the child and try to understand try to uh, you know talk to the child and uh, Uh, understand what's happened for the day it's very important connecting uh, with the child for the day and uh, uh, you know asking what what was that particular uh, concept which was taught because everything we operate through the school app everything is on the school app so once they just have to go through the schedule as to what has happened and try to connect ask probe the children who are not too very uh, you know expressive in telling what has happened but yes gradually they will start you know expressing their thoughts on to it so connecting with their homework connecting with their teachers there might be a day when the child is very happy doing that particular concept but again after some time the same concept might be a bit difficult for the child just to understand and bringing it to the school's notice that this is what the concept which has to be repeated again is very important 
so you they should not you know keep quite saying that this is already done and you know how to approach the school and the teachers they should they should do it on regular basis attending the parent teacher meeting is very important because they get to know what exactly is happening with their child and with the teachers they get to connect with the teachers and the rapport between the the school and the teacher and the child and the child is very important there are four pillars i would want to say the school teacher parent and the child you know it's very important so they have to be continuously and you know in touch with the child saying that you know what exactly has happened meeting the teachers taking an appointment even though it is not a parent teacher meeting we encourage all those we never tell the parents that it is not a parent teacher meeting so you know you cannot come and meet the teachers no it has happened that with prior appointment uh, during the dispersal time also some of the parents come and after that they meet the teachers and go back so this has really helped and i can see the learning levels actually improved once the uh, you know uh, parents start showing that kind of an uh, you know interest in the child's academics that's very important very good to know that the parent uh, are invited to actively participate for the child's betterment so that's a uh, very inclusive of you you included the parents into the cut ma'am nep uh, according to many and uh, definitely a step forward in formalizing a preschool what are your thoughts on it oh uh, yeah national education policy actually was very good i think uh, uh, the pre the pre primary level was always a choice it was never you know Uh, a requirement but now i think with this nep coming into the picture now i think uh, uh, the nursery lkg and ukg is being taken more seriously otherwise we see parent inquiry coming to us and saying that ma'am my child is 3 years old but we want our child to be there in the upper kg age uh, you know the grade but which is absolutely we are going against nature when we do that it's clearly said that 2 to 3 years is going to be for the uh you know pre nursery and 3 to 4 is going to be nursery age group 4 to 5 is going to be the lower kg lkg and 5 uh, to 6 is going to be the age group for upper kg ukg but sometimes we tend to go against the nature and you know parents are in a hurry to put them on because they feel that their child is the most smart in the family and they the child will be able to you know get into the classes once we do that the, they you know parents have to understand that the child is missing out on many Uh, you know concepts out on to it so with this nep coming into the picture i think uh, i don't know uh, how much will that be implemented but yes the thought of including 2 to 8 as the primary and which comes under nep is very very uh, you know very very convincing to me so there has to be i think children till 8 years have to be considered you know as the pre primary Uh, children that's very important because what used to happen was immediately after upper kg they were going to grade 1 and they were all lost the curriculum used to be too huge the gap between the curriculum with uh, ukg and grade 1 used to be so high that the children would have actually got you know frightened with the curriculum parents get is no scared when they attend the parent teacher meeting saying that their child needs to pick up so these are the things which uh, i think uh, nep coming into the picture should uh, actually uh, you know streamline now i think so that's a very good uh, concept according to me lot of uh, knowledge and experience is just shining through when you uh, gave us all this insight so ma'am uh, this 24 years of dedicated work in education field tell us something about it ma'am how did you start your journey uh yeah actually uh, i never knew that i was good at teaching but i don't know what uh, uh, you know triggered that uh, thought on to me I, probably with my younger daughter uh, i think i started teaching her and after that i realized that teaching was uh, you know somewhere in my uh, uh you know it was a passion because i was enjoying doing it and the way i uh, got trained for the montessori i felt that yes this is something which i should be doing it so these little ones the basic foundation is very important 
this was you know when i realized that yes my ego one uh, was absolutely um, you know struggling to cope up with the grade one uh, curriculum as i just told you because uh, you know nep was not there and it was all of a sudden from upper kg to grade one which was a huge struggle so that was the time when i realized that yes uh, there has to be the foundation has to be very strong so when we talk about foundation it's definitely a preschool so i started getting trained uh, you know for this and i was montessori trained and i did my uh, you know ntt also for a year and uh, i did my b ed from igno so that uh, you know i uh, i could just understand because uh, my subject under uh, igno was child psychology that was something which was very much interesting to me so every day when i wake up in the morning the curiosity and uh, the inquisitiveness that the children come into the question mark has to be uh, you know changed into a full stop that is what actually i look forward to so i think their questions to be answered and their queries and their uh, knowledge there are so many things which we learn from them also so that was also one of the you know part which i felt that yes spending time with these little ones was actually blissful which i am still continuing I, and i would definitely continue what inspires madam like every day motivation where do you get it this is this tireless uh, endeavor of yours it's just those little ones coming in and you know you spending time with them parents coming to me and talking to me and you know telling their uh, uh citing their uh, you know problems to me i feel that yes we need to be connected with them and especially with the teachers like me who have had enough experience where we have handled parents and we know we can understand uh, you know what they are going through and just to soothe in their uh, you know worries is something which i look forward to and that's the great uh, uh, you know energy which we get and the little ones coming and settling down and first it's all uh you know crying howling and all those things and after that when they see they, they just don't want to go out of the premises so when you go there inside the class the way they learn and the questions they ask they show their dress in, you know it's once in a week they have this color dress on friday to wear and you know how how uh you know well they keep looking forward to wear that and the moment you get inside they ask deepa ma'am look at my dress how am i looking how is my jacket how is my hair band and you know those things lovely they are very no sent swapna so spending time with them is what i keep looking forward to and uh, it's as i told you it's it's a bliss this is what looks makes like my day in the morning looks like you're very well connected with your students ma and uh, it shows in the way that you're talking about them so passionately absolutely absolutely undoubtedly i'm with them every moment so it's just because i head the school it doesn't mean that i'm sitting in the office yes running the business is something very different yes money is needed but that's corollary you do your job you do your work that follows you you need not go behind money so that is what i have always you know like experience so i give in my full uh, you know efforts on to it and the team whom i build i bring in the teachers with the same passion the caretakers with the same passion sometimes with zero experience i've seen teachers and the caretakers coming in with that great passion sometimes what happens is the most experienced ones would not have had delivered the way i you know um, you know expect them to do it for me passion is what follows everything you have to be passionate in what you do experience will definitely follow i'm sure parents are well assured that the child is much taken care of at little millennium mom thank you for sharing so many insights with us mom i would like to know your feedback on our platform schools yeah uh, schools has always been connected with uh, you know so many parents i think i would would want to tell every parent to just stay connected with schools uh, you know where they are helping out in uh, identifying the best school uh, you know better clarity for them to decide because uh, it's it's there is so much of confusion around as to which school to go what to do where to put them and all those so staying connected with schools will definitely help them out come out of this con- confusion i think they are fortunate enough to have such a platform swapna thank you so much for your warm words madam uh, we have always been looking forward to you know helping Anytime. our parent community connect with the schools thank you so much and much appreciate your time and insight uh, that you've given to us i'm sure parents can make a very uh, educated choice now about picking a pre nice preschool for their children thank you so Absolutely. much ma'am appreciate your time and thank you swapna thank you
Thank you.